guys, I hope you're having a great day. Um, I decided to go ahead and make a video showing something that I've kind of avoided um, showing for a while because at first I thought, oh, this is terrible. And then the longer it's gone on, I have done it more and more purposefully and it has worked so well that I now do it all the time. And what that is, hi guys, I'm peeking in here. <laughs> um, what that is, is I have multiple, what I'm terming sacrificial lambs in the plant world that I keep all the time around my succulents that are more attractive to the bugs that typically attract succulents than succulents themselves are. And for me here in Idaho, the main bugs that I have issues with are mealybugs on my succulents. Um, I, we don't have slugs. We don't have a lot of other um, pests um, here that have caused me problems on my succulents anyways. But mealybugs are by far um, the thing I've had the most consistent problem with. And I'm going to move this guy for just a minute here. And... Um, the vine that I just moved there is a Stephanotis vine or a Madagascar jasmine. And um, what you do have to kind of pay attention to when you're trying to choose a plant to do this with is you need a plant that is very susceptible to the type of bug that you're wanting to use it for. And what happens is a lot of bugs will attack succulents, but they're not their favorite. You know, they're, they're kind of tough and um, less than less than ideal as far as what they would like to bite into. They prefer more leafy, um, juicy plants if they have an option. And so what I have done is just make sure they have that option for the last um, few years. And most of your house plants that you buy at the store that are popular will not work for this because the reason they're popular is that they are resistant um, to these bugs. Now, the Stephanotis vine has been one of my favorite. Unfortunately, it's a bit more expensive to find, so you're going to pay, you know, $28, $30 a lot of times from a florist or something for a Stephanotis vine, which can be kind of sad to then just sacrifice and have it look in kind of scraggly. Um, but for me, with my hundreds of succulents, it is so, so worth it because... I literally have not had a single problem with mealybugs in the house since I started doing this consistently, even though my plants go in and out in the summer and I have new plants all the time. The other plant that has worked very well for me has been coleus, which these, these are stems here that I'm rinsing off and putting in. I have a couple plants that I just keep around in different areas with um, in the different areas that my succulents are in. This guy needs some water. And I just, um, these stems had been rooting in, in a vase of water for, I don't even know, a couple months probably because I had been neglecting them that I had chopped off of the mother plant. And I just um, beheaded the mother plant again, which is all of these stems here that I'm now rinsing off and um, I'm rooting that and then it's re-sprouting out from the bottom which that's in a different area. Um, these bugs I had um, rooting in an actual actually a pesticide solution for just a little bit trying to get them um, a little bit um, more resistant than they were because they had got severely severely neglected and dried out and um, the little mealy bugs were just really going to town on them. These guys have been in the water for about a week and some of them are sprouting some roots off um, pretty good like this guy here so you can see the roots there and some of them aren't now where mealy bugs get in these guys are right here in the leaf crux is their absolute favorite um, place to get is right down in here so I'm just rinsing all of these off making sure there's no there's no little buggies before I just gave these some fresh water um, for coleus, I don't know if some of the hybrids are resistant to pesticides. That's pretty typical. A lot of the, the breeding that is being done now, or sorry, not resistant to pesticides, resistant to pests. Um, a lot of the breeding that has been done now is they're actually breeding pesticides into plant genes. And um, so that they aren't susceptible to the same kinds of bugs that they usually are. Um, that's a whole different story and I have a lot of opinions on that. 
um, ethically and just um, environmentally. I'm not for most of it, but um, it's just a fact. And so if you're going to nurseries and looking for plants to do this with, you need to make sure they are old fashioned varieties <laughs> that are susceptible to bugs, which is kind of, kind of funny. But um, something like a coleus is really cheap um, compared to like a stephanotis. Um, you can Google also other plants that are very susceptible to whatever bugs that you are around and that, or that you have on your succulents and want to avoid and um, keep those close to your succulents and the bugs just migrate over to these guys and then I wash them off or deal with them and if they cause damage to one of these guys it really isn't going to devastate me at all. Um, and for the amount of time and energy and money it saves me, it is absolutely worth it. Because for these guys, I don't know if you can see, I didn't put my um, macro lens on here, but there's, you can see mealybug down in there. It's pretty easy to just take a spray bottle and, or, or your um, hose on your sink and wash these guys off. And, um, enough to keep the plants happy and healthy and enough to distract the bugs from your lovely little succulents especially especially if you introduce a lot of new plants or in the fall this I cannot recommend this enough and like I said when I first started I thought oh no I felt so guilty because my leaf a couple of my leafy plants seem to constantly be battling um, mealybugs and then the more I began to notice the more I began to put them in strategic places and decide that it's it's really okay and not just okay it's very beneficial and for the most part if you keep up on it it won't harm your leafy they won't harm your leafy plants a ton if you if you're keeping up and rinsing them off now in one of my videos I showed where I was watering the stephanotis vine with a systemic um, pesticide to kill these guys from the inside out because it was just too far gone. I was so ill and it got ignored for months on end and there was probably four months of the mealybugs just going to town on my beautiful vine and it really set it back. And so I need to give it a break from, from the mealybugs. The systemic pesticide doesn't last forever. It's just, you know, it's just a dose um, and eventually it will be susceptible again but for now it needs to have a break and if you have a plant like that that you love and it does get away from you because you're kind of using it as a scapegoat um, you can do that you can water them with a pesticide and kind of help the plant heal a bit more but as a general idea having some scapegoat plants around if you have any bug problems is just something that I highly highly recommend and I wanted to make a really quick video showing you guys um, a couple of my top plants. It seems to me that if they're stressed or not taken care of really well, it does even better because the more stressed a plant is, the more attractive it is to bugs usually. Um, and so like with these guys, the more sun they get, the darker they get. But if I keep them kind of just in bright light, but no direct light where they're just a little bit pink, they're not quite as healthy as they should be. And it makes them even more appealing to the bugs. And for me, that's that's what I'm going for. If you were trying to grow a beautiful coleus plant, that would that wouldn't be um, great. There are multiple others which they're I'm just they're flying out of my brain right this instant. There are multiple others that are particularly susceptible to mealybugs. Orchids are on the list, and I have never had a mealybug on an orchid ever. And I I I don't have a ton of orchids. I I probably have 15 or so. But um, I've had them for quite a while, and I have literally never found a single mealybug, and they, and they can be sitting right next to a plant that is very susceptible and covered in mealybugs, and they still don't get it. So I'm guessing that maybe my orchid varieties are hybridized um, to be resistant. So if you Google, you know, what plants are traditionally susceptible to certain bugs so that you can pick one, um, Please, please, like I said, be very aware of the variety and try and get an old-fashioned or heirloom plant, if at all possible, uh, because they're way more susceptible to bugs, usually, and that's what we want in, in this particular case. Alrighty, that's it for now, and I'm going to make sure all of these bugs are gone on these guys and deal with my Stephanotis and make sure it's doing okay, 
and clean up any stragglers on it and then get back to my gardening. So I hope that helps you guys in some way, um, maybe just an idea if you're really struggling with bugs. And you guys have a fantastic day and happy growing.